The Queen's former footman, Paul Burrell, tells that she'll be devastated that what should be a monumental year for her will be overshadowed. Paul, who worked for the Queen before his 11 years as Princess Diana's butler in Rock, says, This should be a wonderful year for the Queen, and there's no doubt she'll be looking forward to the Jubilee enormously. But I'm sure she's also very aware of what's in store. The year will be bookended by two very difficult events for her. In January, we have all the drama surrounding Andrew and, towards the end of the year, we'll have Harry's memoir, no doubt with more intimate bombshells. It's heartbreaking. I'm sure she'll be very apprehensive about the year ahead, and other royals, especially William and Kate, will step up to support her more than ever. Harry's memoir, the first part of a multi-book deal he and Meghan signed with Penguin Random House last year, is one of many lucrative collaborations the couple have made since resigning as working royals to start a new life in the U.S. in January 2020. It follows his and Meghan's interview with Oprah Winfrey in March last year, which sent shockwaves through the, the firm after they openly accused a senior royal of racism, alleged Kate Middleton had upset Meghan, and claimed the family ignored mental health struggles that had left Meghan suicidal. Harry, 37, also described his brother Prince William and father Prince Charles as being trapped and said he wanted to break the cycle of pain and suffering of the royal upbringing. He added that life in the royal family was like a mix between, film, The Truman Show and being in a zoo. Harry took further shots at the royals during his mental health podcast for Apple TV+, again alongside Oprah Winfrey, during which he revealed he was told to just play the game within the royal family, and accused them of neglect when it came to protecting Meghan. The royals were said to be livid over the couple's comments, with William in particular reportedly furious with his brother, and the pair are still said to be barely speaking. Meanwhile, royal commentator and biographer Katie Nichol, who wrote William and Harry, Behind Palace Walls, predicts more eyebrow-raising interviews from Meghan and Harry, and more stress and sadness for the Queen. Katie tells, the book will no doubt be full of more intimate and shocking revelations. Harry wouldn't have got a multi-million pound advance without promising some juicy details. And in the build-up to that, I imagine Harry and Meghan will have a carefully thought-out publicity drive, which will see them drip-feed teasers in the months building up to the release. There'll be more shocking claims to come, perhaps their biggest yet. I'm sure the Queen has a lot of anxiety over that and the royals will be braced for more bombshells. Paul, 63, adds. I think it is abundantly clear that now is not the time to be writing a tell-all book about the royal family, with all the Queen is going through. It will be the ultimate betrayal. Surely Harry will see what this has done to his family and find it within himself to cancel the book, or postpone it. Even though he has stooped low in the past, he adores his granny and surely he'll realize it'd be too much for her. Hopefully, this year Harry and Meghan will lay down their swords, at least for the time being. They must not cause any more drama for the Queen she's been through enough. Meanwhile, in another twist, Virginia Jufri's lawyer David Boyce last week claimed that, if Prince Andrew's trial were to go ahead, Meghan could even be brought to the stand to testify against her uncle-in-law. He said, 1, she's in the U.S. so we have jurisdiction over her. 2, she is somebody who obviously, at least for a period of time, was a close associate of Prince Andrew. 3, she is someone we can count on to tell the truth. But Paul tells closer, I don't think Meghan would go to court and get involved in Andrew's case, purely because of her ego and her brand. I don't think she'd want anything to do with this at all. She wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. If she were to testify, that truly would be it for her and Harry. There would be no chance of a reconciliation and the rift would never be healed. Let's hope Harry and Meghan have it within them this year to leave the drama aside for the sake of the Queen. Besides, Brits will be treated to a massive four-day bank holiday weekend during the summer to celebrate the Queen marking her Platinum Jubilee. The four-day bonanza, which falls on the first weekend of June, is set to be bursting with treats from Her Majesty, 95, as she celebrates 70 years on the throne. A huge national pudding competition will make up some of the celebrations, while thousands of Jubilee lunches will be held to honor Britain's longest-ever reigning monarch. The May Bank holiday weekend, which usually falls at the end of the month, will be moved to Thursday, June 2nd to fit in festivities. And the weekend will be extended with an extra day off on Friday, June 3rd. Buckingham Palace said the extra-long weekend will provide an opportunity for communities throughout the United Kingdom to come together and celebrate the historic milestone.